Hi, my name is Morgan and I am a neuroscience researcher and today I want to talk to you about this man named Sergio Canavero and that is the only time I will be saying his last name for this whole video because I cannot pronounce it properly and I refuse to say it again. But before I get started, I do have a few announcements for this channel. First of all, I got a new microphone, which makes me officially a professional YouTuber. I will not be blaming the YouTube algorithm for everything that ever goes wrong in my entire life. Also, I would like to say thank you to my total of four new subscribers. I appreciate you and it means a lot to me. And lastly, I have decided on an official upload schedule. After this video, I will be uploading every Wednesday. So who is Sergio? Anyone who's known me for more than five minutes knows that I have an obsession with this dude, like on an unhealthy level. If he were not a real human being, like if he were a fictional character, he would be my favorite person ever. The issue is that he is a real person and he's doing real damage. So he's not great, but he is insane and I am fascinated by him. He is an Italian neurosurgeon who announced in 2015 that he would be doing the world's first head transplant within two years. Now, if you do the math on that, it has now been five years and the head transplant has still not happened. And that's because it's impossible. <laughs> Maybe someday we'll get to a level where it is possible, but in modern times, especially in 2015, not, it's not happening anytime soon. So like I said, in 2015, Sergio came out and said that he was going to perform the world's first head transplant within two years. And he calls this project the Heaven Project, which stands for the Head Anastomosis Venture. And if, like me, you have no clue what anastomosis means, anastomosis in this case means a surgical connection made between the brainstem and the spinal cord. If you don't know much about brain and spine anatomy, your uh, brainstem comes out... I'll use my little demonstration toy. So this little bit right here is your brainstem and it comes out of the back of your skull to meet your spinal cord. So why would the surgery be insanely difficult? If you have never seen a spinal cord, you might think that it's a cord. <laughs> and so you could just take the two ends, like electrical wires, and maybe just sort of like tie them together, but you can't. I personally have worked with spinal cords, but only in rats. So I don't know how well that translates over to humans, but if it's anything like rats, it's, it's very much a snot like substance like it's clear-ish and it's white and whenever you cut it it like coils in on itself and it'll just connect to whatever you're like i was using a scalpel it just wrapped around the scalpel um and it's very difficult to keep straight and to work with and to reattach we still to this day have not figured out how to reattach a spinal cord and the patient live and be fine with no problems because if we could do that no one would be paralyzed <laughs> so yeah so in this video i'm going to go over what sergio is trying to do in five parts first i'll give you a basic timeline of events then i'll explain how the procedure is meant to work next i will talk about uh finding a recipient and a donor because that has been extremely difficult then Sergio as a human being, why I'm obsessed with him and also why he's problematic. <laughs> lastly, the controversy that all of this has caused and the ethical implications of what Sergio is trying to do. So the basic timeline, Sergio was working for a hospital in Turin, Italy up until uh, 2015. Shortly after he made his announcement saying that he planned to do the world's first head transplant, he and the hospital agreed that uh, he would not be working there anymore. My thoughts personally is that probably the hospital was not okay with what Sergio was trying to do because of the ethical issues with it, but um, neither of them have released an official statement saying that. Nearly every Western country, uh, including Europe and America, have agreed not to let Sergio do his surgery there. So Sergio is now in China. He has put together a team of Chinese neurosurgeons, including Dr. Zhao Ping Bren, whose name I will put up here in case I just butchered that. Sergio and his team have published a series of papers over what they are proposing to do, some animal research and a entire paper just detailing how the procedure will be done whenever it's able to be done. Um, none of these papers have been published in what I would call a reputable journal. 
Um, just because something is out there on the internet and says it's a scientific paper does not mean it is a scientific paper. But this could be for several reasons. One reason is that I believe personally that these are bad science and couldn't get published. But there's the thought that what he's trying to do is so controversial that no journals want to accept his papers, which I could see if they weren't also bad science. <laughs> So to, to fully understand why what he's doing is bad science, you need a little bit of background on uh, how research is conducted. So whenever you're trying to do something in humans, you have to start with non-humans. So usually uh, neuroscience starts in a um, either a cell tissue culture, but this is a surgery, so it can't start in a tissue culture. Um, so it would most likely start in rats or mice. And he has performed one surgery on one or two rats, depending on how you count them. Um, and then you would move on to a slightly larger animal. Uh, it's depending on what you are trying to do will determine what type of animal you would work with. I am not familiar with neurosurgery enough to know which animal they would progress to, but I do know that, do know that one of these would be in between, probably a rabbit, a cat, a dog, a pig, some larger animal. And then depending on how intense what you're trying to do is, you would either move on to healthy human subjects or non-human primates. Because of how difficult and controversial the surgery is, he would definitely be required to do it on a non-human primate before he was allowed to do it on a human being. Lastly, usually surgeries are perfected on a cadaver before they are used on a, a live human being. A cadaver is a dead human who has to who has, depending on where you are, and we'll get into this later, donated their body to science, given it over to be studied, to be used for these practices. There are statisticians out there who will uh, help researchers determine the amount of animals that are needed for, uh, for a research study to be considered a success. But I would argue 100% of the time, the correct number of animals to use is larger than one. And Sergio would disagree with me on that. He believes that animal research is unethical, which is his, entirely his opinion that he is entitled to. But if you are conducting research, you do have to start off in animals because would you rather kill a rat or a living human being? Most people would argue that they would rather kill a rat. So despite uh, not liking animal research, Sergio has conducted three animal studies using three to five animals, depending on how you count them. A disclaimer for this section of this video, I am going to show a very graphic photo of a rat that has had another head stitched onto it. So if that will disturb you, I will put a timestamp right here so you can fast forward to that point, but onto the disturbing animal studies. Sergio's first study was conducted in rats. He took the head of one rat and attached it to the body and head of a second rat. So that's why I mean whenever I say one or two, depending on how you count it, because is that second rat head that doesn't have a body alive? <laughs> and that's one of the, the major ethical issues with what Sergio is doing. But anyways, uh, so he attached the head of one rat onto the body and head of another rat. I'll put a picture here so you can see what I mean by that. It is disturbing to look at, but uh, according to Sergio, the rats both survived for 36 hours and then they died due to lack of blood flow because it was one heart pumping for two heads. Um, whenever I say that he claimed that they survived, I'm gonna say that with all of his studies because like I said, they weren't published in peer-reviewed journals and there's not really anything other than the photos of the animals to back up that this even happened. So um, I'm skeptical at best. His next surgery was done in dogs. Oh, and keep in mind that these are all being done in one or two animals. So he did that study on a rat, two rats-ish, and they died after 36 hours and he considered that a success. So then he moved on to dogs. In a singular dog, he supposedly severed the dog's spinal cord and then reattached it and the dog regained full motor ability and was totally fine afterwards. So after that, 
success, more of a success than the last one, if it really happened. But again, if we had a way to reattach spinal cords, a lot less people would be paralyzed. So I don't think that he did it really, but he claims to have done it. So I'm going to say that he did it. After that success, he moved on to two, one monkey, um, one monkey head and one monkey body from two separate monkeys. So he attached the head of a monkey to the body of a different monkey. And again, there's not really any evidence to say that this happened other than the photos of it. I thought about showing you a photo of it, but then I saw it and I had nightmares. So you can Google head transplant monkey and see it for yourself, but it is too disturbing for me to put in this video. As someone who does animal research, I cried. Like I, I couldn't handle that. Also in all the pictures, the monkey looks dead, <laughs> but he claims that it was alive when the pictures were taken. So I don't know. Sergio claims that this monkey was totally fine, but after 20 hours, it had to be put down for ethical reasons, which one can only assume means that the monkey had a psychological breakdown from being on a different body. Like this is messed up if you think about it in humans. I think a human would have a really hard time adjusting to be a head on a new body, but you didn't even warn that monkey what was gonna happen to it. It just woke up one day and was on a different body. So like I said, Sergio has performed these studies in three to five animals, depending on how you count them, and has considered each one a success, even though none of them lived for more than two days. And now he is ready to perform the surgery on human beings. Sergio also claims that he performed this procedure successfully on two cadavers in China. There's a lot of questions behind this. First of all, I saw this in a bunch of media reports, but I couldn't find him publishing anything on it. And if he's not afraid to publish that he successfully removed the head of a monkey and put it on a different monkey and then had to put it down, he would definitely publish this whole cadaver situation, but he didn't. So that, I don't know that I think that it happened. The other question is the ethical issues with this because apparently, I didn't know this until I read an article on it, apparently China is pretty well known for um, using the bodies of executed prisoners as research subjects, which is unethical and bad. But supposedly Sergio transplanted the head of one dead body onto the body of another dead body in 2018. Um, also, I couldn't find any interviews about it, and Sergio is, he, we'll get onto it later, but Sergio is big on interviews. He loves talking about himself. So I really don't think that this happened, because I think I would have heard more about it. And yeah, like I said, I've been following this pretty closely, and I, that's all that I could find is that possibly he probably did this thing. So on to how the actual procedure is going to work. Sergio said that he was inspired by a surgery done in the 1970s by a man named Robert White, who um, took the head of one monkey and put it on the body of another monkey. Robert White claims that this monkey lived for eight days, but in a similar fashion to Sergio, I could not find a whole lot of information on it, and it was not published in any good peer-reviewed papers, <laughs> journals. So... However, even though Robert did this study, um, he had a really hard time justifying it and dealing with the ethical implications. And he said that humanity would need to progress a long way before we could do this ethically and well on humans. But let's forget all the ethical issues with the monkey studies and move on to how we're going to do this on humans. So Sergio estimates that the surgery will take anywhere between 36 and 72 hours. I am not a neurosurgeon and I know that they are famous for doing very long, long surgeries, but one human being cannot operate for 72 hours. So it's like, how in the world is he going to do all of this? And here's how. He's going to have a medical team of 150 medical professionals, including 80 surgeons who will tag team through the surgery to do their specific specialty. And Sergio will only come in to sever the spinal cord and to reattach it. So he's gonna claim all the fame for something that 80 surgeons collectively worked on. 
That means that this is going to require a ridiculously large room and a lot of tag teaming. And anytime you involve more than one surgeon in a surgery, first of all, that surgery is really complicated if you have to involve more than one surgeon. But also, the risk goes way up because if there's any sort of miscommunication between the surgeons as they're tag teaming in and out, you could die. Also, severing your head from your body could kill you, but we're ignoring that for now. Sergio also wants to cool the head down to 50 degrees Fahrenheit, which he says will give the team one hour to move the head from the body and put it onto a different body without it, the brain dying from a lack of blood flow and oxygen. And I'm not an expert, but one hour in 72 hours <laughs> are very different numbers. He's also going to put the donor body, the body that the head is going onto, into a medically induced hypothermia um, to prevent tissue and organ damage. He says that the recipient and the donor heads will need to be removed at the exact same time and then a special crane will be used to pick the head up off of one body and put it onto the other body and sort of hold it there. That way the surgeons can work around it comfortably. <laughs> Once the head is attached, he's going to put the whole patient, the head and the body into a medically induced coma. That way the body can have proper time to heal without any sort of trauma happening to it. And this will go on for about three weeks then the patient will wake up and attach to a new body. There's a lot of psychological issues that have been raised with this that I'll get onto later, but just know that maybe waking up with your head on top of a new body is maybe not the best thing for your brain, even if it works. I'm going to not go into any of the really gory details of the surgery, but if you're curious about it, I am going to attach his paper in the description that details how the surgery will be done. And this paper was published in 2013, and like I said, he announced it in 2015, and then still has not done it in 2020. So he's had big ideas, but not really done them. Some things that I didn't mention is that he plans that this whole surgery will be done underneath a microscope which is not really a revolutionary idea for any type of neurosurgery, but is something to note, something that he thinks is revolutionary that is debatable, is that he's going to use a diamond scalpel blade. And he claims that this will give him sharper cuts, which will make it easier to reattach the spinal cord. I will give him this. I do believe that diamond blade gives sharper cuts, what I don't believe is that it will make it easier to retouch the spinal cord because like I said, the spinal cord is like a bundle of snot <laughs> and it's a bunch of teeny tiny nerves. So um, I don't care how sharp you cut it, good luck reattaching two strings that are microscopic, teeny tiny, that you don't know which ones connect to which corresponding ones on the body because different nerves do different things. So now that I'm done having that mental breakdown, let's move on to finding a donor and recipient body. So whenever I talk about this, the recipient is the head. So the, the person who will still be alive and then the body is the donor. And so to find a donor, uh, he's had a really big struggle because he's having to be very specific with the donors. For example, the donor needs to be either recently dead right before they performed the procedure, which would be extremely unethical to arrange that, or the donor will need to be someone who is brain dead so they can euthanize the body when they need it without it being super unethical. I do know that in the past he has been accused of possibly trying to bribe families, saying that he would pay the family a large amount of money to get their loved one's dead body, but um, I couldn't find anything substantiating those claims. Um, so I don't know how true they are, but they've been made. Another issue with finding a donor body is that you'd have to match the gender, ethnicity, skin color, um, height, weight of your recipient. 
And matching all of that is in addition to all of the normal things that need to be matched with the transplant, like different uh, antibodies and different immunological things. I'm not super familiar with any transplants other than the head transplant, so I can't specify any of those things, but there's a lot of genotyping that goes into a transplant. The other big issue has been finding a recipient. Originally, Sergio did have a head transplant recipient uh, planned, and his name was Valerie Spiridonov. Again, can't pronounce that last name. I'm just going to be calling him Valerie. He uh, is a man who is suffering from Wernig Hoffman disease, which has left him paralyzed from the neck down and his muscles are slowly deteriorating away. However, there were some ethical issues with recruiting Valerie that I will get onto whenever I start talking about the ethical issues. Um, so he has backed out <laughs> of the surgery, which I don't blame him for. Um, personally, I think that he was unaware of how risky the surgery was whenever he signed up. He has since realized. But Sergio says that he has now found an unnamed Chinese man in China to do this surgery on. So now on to Sergio as a person, and this is why I'm obsessed with him, and this is why I call him a mad scientist, because he is fully convinced that he will be able to do the surgery. Like, there is no doubt in his mind that this head transplant will happen, and he will be the one to do it. He's given interviews where he calls himself a celeb, which is my favorite. He won't even say celebrity. He is a celeb. After he left Italy, he went on what he calls the brouhaha, which is amazing. I want a debacle of some sort that's not unethical that I can refer to as the brouhaha. But all that he's talking about whenever he says that is that he's given a series of interviews and TED Talks and papers um, all detailing how this will work and it sparked a lot of controversy and he loves it. He claims that the medical establishment has turned its back on him and that um, his peers are jealous, essentially, of what he is doing and that he they aren't going to be the ones doing it. And he fully believes that he is in the right and nothing that he is doing is unethical. Also, this is the part where he sounds like a mad scientist. He has also said that he would like to create immortality for humans. And by what he means by this is that he would like to be able to take the brains of humans and put them into other humans. So if you get really old, your body starts deteriorating, he'll take your brain and put it into a younger body, which sounds like a dystopian novel that I read one time called the Unwind series. Highly recommend it. It's terrifying and has a lot of questions, but don't worry, he has some answers. Sergio has said that he quote, dreams of a day when humans will be able to grow our own clones made from our own DNA and transfer our aging brains into our vibrant young selves when our own bodies start to wither and fall apart, end quote. So there's some issues with that. First of all, we can't clone humans yet. Secondly, if we could clone humans, do the clones have rights? Do the clones count as human beings? Because wherever you remove their brains to put your brain in it, you would then be killing another human, also technically killing yourself, also killing this clone. So that would have a lot of ethical debates over whether or not clones deserve rights and are human beings. There's also the question of, are we transplanting an 80 year old brain into like a one year old's body? or are we like raising them to be 18 only to kill them and put older brains in them? Also, there's the issue of if we can't figure out cloning, would maybe, I'm not saying surgery would do this, but maybe other people, would they take it too far and maybe um, farm humans to put their brains in? That feels gross, just saying it. Also, Sergio is a brain surgeon. I don't, I think I mentioned that he's a brain surgeon. So he should know that as you get older, yes, your body deteriorates, but so does your brain. Have you ever heard of Alzheimer's or dementia? Like your, your brain deteriorates when you get older too. So maybe you could get a few extra years out of it by putting it in a new body, but you couldn't create immortality. You would have to also solve aging. And if you solved aging, you wouldn't need to put the brain in a new body. 
moving on from all of that, one of my absolute favorite things that Sergio has ever said is that he was in an interview and the interviewer asked him if he expected to win a Nobel Prize from this. And he said, yes, but he also said, quote, for the next 100 years, it will be on TV. It will be much more than landing on the moon. I'm pretty sure about that. This will be the greatest revolution in human history, end quote. But she's not wrong. It would be an amazing revolution. And I'm sure a lot of people would watch it. I would love to witness it, but also you would witness a murder. <laughs> the first head transplant, the very first one is not going to go well his patients are going to die in the first head transplant, guaranteed. So that's not great. But this man fully believes that his surgeries will be televised and that no one will want to watch other TV programming. They will just want to watch him doing this head transplant surgery. I want his level of confidence. And like I said, if he weren't real like if you were a fictional character oh my god i would be so obsessed with him <laughs> i would just be freaking out over this character because he's crazy he's a crazy character but he's a real life human being who's gonna hurt other real life human beings so he's not good and i can't emphasize that enough that he is putting real life human beings in danger but he also just has a level of confidence that no one else will ever achieve so lastly let's move on to the controversy around all of this the very first issue that a lot of people have is the um, psychological possibilities of this. If you take a human brain, <laughs> a human head, and put it on another human being's body, what is going to happen in their brain? We don't know, but we can take some things that other transplant patients have said. There is a man who received an arm transplant. Uh, so I think it's from about right here down, it's someone else's arm. And he said that whenever he holds his wife's hand, it feels like someone else is holding her hand. And he still interacts with the man's, the donor arm's wife. Um, and he'll hold her hand with her dead husband's hand. So... Humans don't deal with being on other human beings' bodies well. And that's just on a very small scale. There's also people who have had heart transplants claim to have felt emotions from the uh, other, from, from like the person who donated the heart. I'm more skeptical about those because your emotions happen in your brain and not your heart. So I don't see how that transfer would happen. Uh, so I think that's all psychological. I don't doubt that they have those, these emotions and that they attribute them to the other person. I just doubt that the other person caused those emotions. There's also the ethical issues with where the bodies are coming from. And the, like I discussed earlier, the whole clone thing is an ethical question. The whole, um, are clones human beings thing. But also nowadays, if he does the surgery now only to put disabled people's heads on able people's bodies, where is he getting those able bodies from? Where? Who is donating them? Um, there's also a lot of question of um, as disabled people are labeled a vulnerable group in our society, if you tell someone who cannot walk that you have the power to give them the ability to walk, um, there's the question of whether or not they're actually able to consent to that and whether or not they're actually fully able to understand the odds that they will die versus the odds that they can walk. I think that view is a bit ableist. I don't know if I couldn't walk and someone told me they had the possibility to make me walk, I might agree to it even though I might die. But, um, but also if you're in the right state of mind, you are legally allowed to make that decision. But this sort of became a big issue whenever Valerie backed out of the head transplant. He signed up to be the recipient within 15 minutes of ever hearing of the surgery, which means that he definitely was not able to fully comprehend all of the issues with it. Uh, I believe that he saw one of Sergio's TED Talks and would like to be able to walk, so he signed up. Uh, I think at some point he discovered how risky it was and how Everyone was guaranteeing that he would die and he backed out. Also, just with the whole temptation thing, one thing that Valerie has said in interviews is that he, quote, 
always wanted to be in science. In Russia, it's hard to work in a lab. The environment isn't good for disabled people, but I always dreamed about being part of some big scientific research, end quote. Which is absolutely heartbreaking, but the right way to be a part of scientific research is not to die for it. I am 100% for giving your body to science. I want to give my body to science. But if you're a living human being who is just willing to die in order to maybe possibly be part of a big breakthrough, um, I don't believe that is right. I don't like it. But like I said, you have, if you are an adult human being in the right state of mind, you have 100% the legal ability to consent to doing one of these things. I just have my own issues with it and a lot of ethicists have their issues with it as well. So that was my wonderful story of this real life mad scientist named Sergio who was planning to do the world's first head transplant. I don't believe that the first head transplant will ever happen. I think even if we manage to get past all of the medical issues with it, the ethical implications are just too strong. There's a lot of medical things that we are fighting over today that um, are less bad than this and we've been fighting over them for hundreds of years. If you'd like to follow me on social media, I'll list all of them here. I will be sure to give any updates on the story if it progresses. Considering nothing has happened since 2018, I don't think much more is going to happen on it and that's why I feel comfortable talking about it now. But um, maybe, maybe if something crazy happens, I'll be sure to tweet about it, put it on my Instagram, all that. You can also email me at this address and ask a neuroscientist anything that you would like. I will try to do a video on it because I'd like to do what my audience is interested in. Um, I think that the head transplant is a story that just about everyone can be interested in no matter who you are. So that's why I really wanted to cover it. Like I said, I have this crazy obsession with Sergio. Um, he's definitely an awful human being. One of the worst. He's definitely going to kill someone. I can't get over that level of confidence and he is incredibly charismatic if you watch any of his TED Talks. I'm going to link to all of the sources that I used in the description box if you want to check any of them out. I'll also link to one of his TED Talks so you can see him talking about what he's trying to do. And yeah, that's all that I have for today. Uh, I hope that you have enjoyed this video. I hope it was somewhat educational. Um, let me know what you think about the whole head transplant situation in the comments. and. I hope you have a good day. Bye.